All right, so welcome to the first annual Cleveland Teaching Collaborative Summer Sandbox. <laughs> We're super excited to be here and have a really flexible week. Um, first up, we have John Hubbard from the Center for Instructional Technology and Distance Learning. Hi, John. Hi. Um, <laughs> who will give our first tutorial um, using Zoom and Teams as lecture capture tool, which is a great thing, especially as we go into different learning experiences in the fall, especially at CSU. Um, after that, we will have, I'll let Mamadou come in before I say about Gathertown. <laughs> cool. Um, so after John's tutorial, we'll have um, some space probably, but also 1130 to 1230, we have a space in Gathertown, which is at the top of the program, the Word program. And it's actually clear to write on the Excel spreadsheet um, that we have for our program. And if Will or Kalita maybe could put the link to our page on the WordPress blog with the schedules, that would be awesome in the chat so people can reference them easily. Um, but Gathertown is just a virtual space to kind of wander around and chat and network and we'll be in there. Week two will be almost completely in Gathertown um, for drop-in sessions that are assignment design cafes. And, um, you know, we'll talk about our resource referatory and how you can add entries to the resource referatory and things like that. So feel free to visit Gathertown anytime throughout the next couple of weeks. Um, it's a place where we can kind of be more um, informal. It's summertime. There's a pool. Um, you know, you can check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, there's a pool. Um, and also, our, so let me introduce the team. And then if you want to say anything about um, your role, go for it. Um, our GAs this summer are Kalita O'Brien, who is a graduate student in history, and Will Fistek. <laughs> and unfortunately, I haven't caught up with Will in the last couple of days. Do you want to say what your affiliation is? <laughs> You're our GA for the program, but he's also um, experienced in K through 12 education and was in the MUST program, right? Um, and so we're super excited to have both of them here helping us out with the summer sandbox and this summer with the collaborative in general. And I'll pass it off to my co-leadership team, <laughs> project director Molly Buckley to um, introduce herself. Sure. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for visiting the CTC Summer Sandbox. We're excited to launch our first event of this kind. And Shelly and I started the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative a year ago now, over a year ago, and it keeps evolving and changing and growing, which was our vision, uh, but it's evolved and changed in ways we hadn't imagined, really thanks to the collaborators. So we just hope all of the participants continue to share their good ideas and um, this week is a chance to really do that and then take those ideas forward to the fall. So thanks for being here. Awesome. And I guess I forgot to introduce myself. I'm sorry. I'm Shelly Rose. I'm in the history department. Um, I work with social studies teacher education and also um, social studies majors in the history department. And we're really excited for the event to start. So I think that at this point, I will pass things over to John, our first presenter, and we will get started for a tutorial on lecture capture. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you. Um, looking forward to doing this. Uh, we've got some pretty, um, some pretty powerful tools available to us to capture content um, in, a, in a persistent way. I want to, I guess I should say I am, uh, you see on the screen there, but John Hubbard and I am the uh, instructional technologist at Cleveland State University. We'll focus on Zoom today because Zoom is actually of the three uh, kind of collaborative tools that we've been using during the pandemic, uh, Zoom, Teams, and, and Meet. Zoom is, is more powerful. Of them. However, I'll note that at Cleveland State, we have the benefit of <laughs> Panopto, a lecture capture tool. So Panopto is, is purpose-built for lecture capture and is 
more powerful yet than Zoom in, in being purpose built for it. So that's available through your Blackboard, uh, your Blackboard courses and either uh, Karen's group, the Center for E-Learning or uh, our group, Instructional Technology can help uh, any CSU faculty or staff uh, get a handle on Panopto. In terms of Zoom, well, let me, when I, when I started this, I went through all the free versions. Um, I went through the free version of Meet and found that on the free version, I can't record. I went through the free version of Teams, found in the free version, I can't record. Went through the free version of Zoom and found that I can record. So there's, you know, there's a baseline uh, in terms of functionality. Zoom from the get-go is, is more powerful. The, if you are, uh, have access to a paid account for Teams or for Meet, then you can record. The, the simplest concept is you start a meeting with nobody else in it. It's just you and you hit record. That's gonna give you your video and it's going to give you whatever screen content you share. And it's gonna give you a kind of picture in picture, you and your content. It's a great way to provide um, persistent content. You can, you can capture it, record it, reuse it how you want. We'll talk more about how you might do that. Um, at CSU, I know that we need to be conscious everywhere, but I, particularly at CSU, I'm aware of this with FERPA and a lot of lectures that were captured in Zoom, Teams, Meet, um, have student likeness in them. Due to FERPA, those can't be reused unless you have explicit permission from each participant whose likeness, who, each student whose likeness is shown. So if you, you know, you may need to redo a lecture that you wanted to reuse uh, because you don't have permission from the students and you don't want to get in trouble with, with FERPA. Uh, you may need to do a tutorial, just a quick tutorial. You've had some questions from students and you want to do uh, something on a, on a whiteboard, on a piece of paper with a document camera, review a PowerPoint slide. Um, you can just jump into Zoom, hit record, share your content, and stop recording. You've got, you've got a lecture capture. You've got persistent content. Uh, maybe to review some, some uh, areas before an exam, before a, uh, an assessment. Maybe you're trying to flip the classroom. Um, and maybe you are going to miss a class, but you want to have continuity so you can deliver a lecture, record it, present it. It does not have to be uh, synchronous. It, it can be something that the students watch at any time. Um, in Zoom, Teams, and Meet, uh, there's, there's cloud versus local. In the free version of Zoom, it's only local recording. You can't record to the cloud. Um, in the paid version, you can opt to record to the cloud. I would, I would put forth that local recording is more flexible. It's more portable. You've got it on your PC. You don't have to download it from anywhere. Uh, you don't have to worry about how you're sharing it. Did you share it with a password? Did you share the password also? Um, it's, it's content that you can take anywhere you want, whether you bring that into your uh, your LMS, or you build your own experience, maybe in, um, maybe you bring it up to YouTube and you create a, an unlisted video or a password protected video, and you could even build a playlist in YouTube and have discrete bits of content put together uh, in, into a whole, similar to what you can do in your learning management system or in, in Panopto for CSU uh, faculty and staff. One of the things I want to point out, we do at, at Cleveland State, we, we suggest to people when they th are thinking about recording lectures and, and content for reuse, that you think about discrete bits of content. Um, you want something that, that you can manage to record without having to hit stop or think about editing or anything like that. So, you know, two to three minute, maybe five minute pieces. You've done a little bit of scripting, maybe some, an outline or some bullets or something, and then take each segment and put it together in a playlist, or if you want to use a video editor, 
take those segments and edit them together so that you've got a whole, but it, it, takes a lot of the stress out of it. Uh, I only need to record a three minute segment. I don't need to record a 45 minute lecture. It's, it makes it a little bit easier, more manageable. If you wanna edit, uh, there are two options that I suggest and I will show one of them. Um, I'm working on a, on a Windows PC, so I can't show you iMovie, but on the Mac, iMovie comes free and uh, it'll edit anything that Zoom records. Um, or that you download from Zoom. And on the Windows side, they used to have Movie Maker and they've now hidden the video editing functionality inside Photos. So on the Windows side, Windows Photos, if you open up a video in Photos, you can edit it. You can do some very basic kind of cuts only editing. Um, in the cloud, you can edit as well, but those edits aren't, aren't real. Uh, what happens in the cloud is you hide bits of video that you don't want Zoom to play, and you can only do the beginning and the end. Um, a possible source of trouble there is that folks on older clients and particularly older mobile clients, their, their, uh, their device might not see those commands don't play the first five minutes and they may get the entire video rather than the segment that you wanted them to see. So if you download and run it through a video editor or if you record locally and just literally chop off the first five minutes rather than hide it, you're in, in much better shape. Um, for most of us, it is, uh, you know, that first five minutes is just the, the getting ready, the housekeeping stuff. Um, but sometimes it can, it, it really can be something that, that shouldn't be shared. The, so let me, um, one thing I realized uh, last night was this is being recorded so that it's a resource uh, for folks who wouldn't, aren't, aren't able to attend. Because it's being recorded, I can't show you how to record. So, uh, realizing that last night, I made a video of how to do a, a single person, a lecture capture session in Zoom using the free version. Um, it's about five minutes long. So what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play that and then we'll go through a couple other things, um, different ways that you might leverage uh, Zoom particularly. Uh, and again, fundamentally, this applies to uh, Microsoft Teams as well as Google Meet. The, the basic one person in the meeting, share content, hit record uh, across all the platforms. So let me share my screen here. Um, I'm going to do a quick share of a video file. Um, and I'm going to ask if there's a how the quality looks because I wasn't really happy with, yeah. Good morning. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do a quick run through of lecture capture using Zoom. The concepts apply in Microsoft Teams or Google Meet, but I think Zoom does a, a much better job of accommodating with even the free account. Um, more tools, uh, Good morning. I'd like to. Uh, can you see the? Can you make out any of the text on this at all? Uh, I just see your desktop. It looks like John. Yeah, and that's what that's what you're supposed to be seeing, right? Okay, now. perfect. Yeah, that's good. Um, close that. Yep. Demonstrate lecture capture using Zoom. I'm using the free version of Zoom. And um, I've worked through both Microsoft Teams and Google Meet, and their free versions don't allow me to record. Only Zoom's free version allows me to record and, and do something like a lecture capture solution. Now, Google Meet and Microsoft Teams, uh, if you've got a subscription to those, if you've got the paid version, you can do the same thing that I'm doing here 
in Zoom. The first thing I'm going to do is launch Zoom. So I'll go to my Windows Start menu and find Zoom. I'll go ahead and open it up. I'm logged into, uh, again, the free account. I'm going to start a new meeting. And I'll join with computer audio. My camera's off for right now. I want to go into settings before I get much further here. Uh, I can either go into settings up here, meeting information, and, and go to settings. But my preferred way is uh, to go into settings either in, in audio or video. The settings there actually open up all the settings. So I'm going to go into recording. I'm going to make sure that my recording is stored in the right location, that I've got some space available. I want to optimize it for a third-party video editor because I might edit this later. I want to record video during screen sharing. In fact, that's essential. And I want to place my video next to the shared screen in the recording. The um, If I don't have that checked, my video, my headshot gets placed on top of, in the upper right hand corner, it, on top of the actual content. I don't want that, it might be in the way, so I'm safe by clicking that. If I have this set the way that I want it, I can close it, and I'm just gonna set things up now. Um, I want to go to share screen, and I'm going to actually share my screen one. Um, because that's, that's where I'm going to launch my PowerPoint. So I'm going to set that up now, and I'm going to launch my PowerPoint. Uh, it's actually already running. And I'm going to go into More, and I'm going to click Record. And I'm going to launch my PowerPoint. And now I am in my PowerPoint and recording my audio. I never turn my video on. So let's do that. My audio and my video. The I can go through my uh, I can go through my PowerPoint um, as I normally do. I can use the PowerPoint annotation tools. I can use the laser pointer, so on. Uh, if you've got a touch-enabled device, a laptop or a desktop with uh, a touch screen, that's great. Uh, makes it much easier to do some annotation with the pen uh, or uh, maybe with the highlighter. So that's, that's the long and short of it. Um, I can select any of the share items, right? I can use any screen or if I've got multiple uh, whiteboards, uh, I mean multiple displays, I've, I've got a whiteboard, if I've got an iPad, I can go into the advanced and use uh, PowerPoint as a virtual background, a second camera like a document camera, um, any of those things I can bring in files. These are standard Zoom things. I'm going to stop that. And then when I'm done, I've gone to the end of my uh, I've gone to the end of my PowerPoint and we'll go through that and just get to the end. Ta-da! Uh, I can escape out of that, but all I really want to do at this point is stop my recording. And I'm going to stop my share. And that's really that's really it. The uh, you did note that there was the pause button in there, so I could pause and relaunch the recording. So if I need to stop for a second to gather material or gather my thoughts, I can, I can hit the pause button. But there are uh, a number of things to consider, and we will talk about those live. Um, needing to do this recording because it, uh, it occurred to me that I can't show you how to record if I'm already being recorded, and this presentation is being recorded uh, as a resource. So that's that. So that was really weird for me to watch, um, but uh, the only way that I could uh, the only way that I could do it while we're being recorded uh, here for posterity's sake. The it, so it, it is a very straightforward process. I want to show off a couple of the tools in the advanced section because I think that they can be uh, they can be pretty powerful in the context of lecture capture. One of them is is. Uh, fairly evident, and that's the document camera. 
Um, we, CSU purchased a number of $99 USB document cameras that have uh, ended up being really great. They're, they're small, they're portable, they are quite flexible in that they can be used as a standard webcam. They have a microphone built in. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't have the luxury of uh, having an institution uh, provide these for you, they're $99. So it, it's not, uh, not a total break the bank um, investment. IPVO is the company. I will, uh, let me do a couple of shares here. First off, I'm going to go in and I'm going to share this as a second camera in Zoom. Um, and I've got my document camera now sharing as a second camera. So I can go in with a, just a piece of paper on my desktop and uh, we can play some tic-tac-toe or something. Uh, you know, whatever kind of written content that I need to do, whether I teach math, art, I want to show folks how to insert proofreader's marks, you know, whatever it is that I'm doing, uh, I've got a 3D object that I want to model in the, uh, with the document camera. The, let me, sh actually, I should have just switched. I'm going to share my uh, desktop for a second here. And let's see. Actually, I'm going to share my web browser and then go over so that we have, let me get this out of the way, ipvo.com. This is the uh, $99 document camera. Looks like that. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but it is CSU green almost. Um, I will stop that share. The thing that I, I'm kind of most excited about in terms of a, a lecture capture tool and uh, capturing something, presenting something in a dynamic manner that's going to engage students is the, um, it's the beta feature. When I go into share screen and go up to advanced, the beta feature of PowerPoint as a virtual background. When I select that, it's going to ask me to open my PowerPoint. I'm going to use the same one. Um, I'm going to use the same one that we, I used in the video last night. And so now here I am on my PowerPoint. And that's pretty cool in and of itself. But what's even cooler is I can resize this and move it around on the fly. So I can take over all the content when I just need to provide an introduction. I don't want students focusing on the slide in the background. Um, I can move myself around as the content changes and I, you know, I don't want to be on top of the content anymore. I can just move myself someplace where I'm not in the content. Uh, it's time to not focus on this content. So I'll make myself big again and so on. Um, I think that's really, I think that's really cool. So I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and that's, uh, that's about 30 minutes of, of using Zoom as a lecture capture tool. Again, it's Cleveland State, Panopto, uh, can't do that really cool, put yourself on top of your PowerPoint, but uh, can do a number of other things and can do it more powerfully than Zoom can. That's a great resource for CSU faculty. Uh, again, Karen's, uh, Karen's group, the Center for E-Learning or our group, the Center for Instructional Technology can support you with that. And um, otherwise, Zoom, uh, go into your meeting. Don't let anybody else in. Hit record, share your content, save it. Use your editing tool, whether that be uh, iMovie in Mac or Photos. Oh, I should just show you that. Um, let me ask, is, is it worth taking uh, a minute or two to look at Photos to do a quick edit? OK, let's yeah. do that. I'm going to share my screen again. I'm going to go back and share screen one, and I'm going to minimize, I'm going to move this to another screen. I'm going to minimize my, slide that out of the way, minimize that, and go into Photos. So it's just the Photos app that's, that's built into Windows 10. If I open a video, uh, let me, I'm going to actually do this a different way. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to open my video. This is, um, yep. So this is the recording. Uh, I'm glad I did this. This is the recording in Zoom. 
This is where I remember I didn't have my camera on. And you see me to the right instead of on top of, and that was that one checkbox. So here I've got my video open. It's an MP4 video. I can click on uh, edit in photos. I can trim, I can draw on it. So annotate, I can do a couple of different effects types of things, but mostly I wanna trim and I will bring my playhead to where I want it to start. And then I will just bring this white button and drag it to there. And I've just trimmed that 16 seconds off the beginning of the video. Same thing at the end, uh, I can use my playhead to find where I want to stop and then drag the white button to that point. And I've trimmed 15, 20 seconds off the end. Uh, if I do a save as, I get a copy of that that is trimmed. So there's no way in that trimmed version, there's no way for anybody to see what's at the beginning or what's at the end. Um, it is just, it's a new video uh, with that trimmed. So that's that. Um, looks like two questions, John. Well, maybe Tice, maybe he mentions in the chat about more advanced trimming. So I don't know if you want to elaborate for anyone who's at a more advanced phase. And then the question about doing all of this uh, without shutting our laptops down device wise and capacity wise. Um, so the the capacity wise, if in terms of, of uh, storage and so on, you're, if you're doing a couple of different things to do. Uh, one, note if you're doing it in Teams, your, your recordings uh, saved to OneDrive slash SharePoint. Uh, and you've got a substantial storage there. Um, and it is from there that you would download them. Uh, and, and if you were to edit your download, I would simply re-upload back to, to SharePoint or Teams or Google Cloud or, you know, whatever your, your given resource is. Uh, at, at CSU, there are a number of options. Uh, you can use your, your um, SharePoint or OneDrive. You can use uh, Panopto. So you could take a video that you've recorded in Zoom and upload it to Panopto. Um, and as I suggested earlier, the, the, the upload to YouTube. Um, if you bring it up to YouTube and you could then archive the video on some cloud-based storage. And if you need to distribute it amongst various free accounts, you can do that. You can have a, a Dropbox, a OneDrive, a Google Drive, where you, you know, you've got some videos on each of them um, so that you don't end up with terabytes of lecture capture on your personal device. Um, I, hey. um, I, I mostly meant, uh, okay, my, my flow last semester was something like um, on my laptop with touch, I scribbled, be it in OneNote, be it in power, over my PowerPoint to during the lectures. Yep. And then meanwhile, um, I had a second screen so that I could see the black boxes or videos of the and, and chat and interactions with the students. So there were two screens to uh, run. There was a Zoom and yes, the Zoom recording in the cloud. Uh, but occasionally my laptop, which is a very decent laptop, um, didn't like that enough um, and, and was um, uh, started to throttle ser seriously overheat. Um, because that was just too much graphics to handle, I guess. So uh, I wonder whether there were any, and it wasn't just me. I heard one or two other people as well doing having similar issues. So I was wondering whether there were some smart buttons that I missed to lower the frame rate or whatever. There, um, in Zoom, you can, you can lower the frame rate, um, but the default is, unless you've made your, uh, your camera HD, unless you've enabled HD, the default is, is enhanced standard definition in Zoom. 
Um, I think uh, Zoom is, you know, what Zoom says is a, a minimum is a little misleading once you do start doing a number of different things, like especially like you're describing. Um, and we've found uh, some, some hit or miss depending on the device. Um, we've seen some, um, some really odd behavior on MacBook Pros, uh, not necessarily MacBook Airs, uh, where there's where there appears to be some some throttling and some incredibly high fan noise, which gets in the way of the recording, uh, and we've seen it on some of the Windows um, devices, uh, the Surface Book. I'm not sure which generation and the That's Surface uh, the Surface Pro, um, and it's it seems to be hit or miss. I've got a colleague who's had bad experiences with his Surface Book and a previous Surface Pro, I've had no issues on a Surface Pro. Um, so I don't, I don't have an easy answer to that. Um, the, I would suggest as a CSU faculty, if there's an op option to use Panopto to do the lecture capture, um, Panopto has the ability to adjust and all of your sources resolution. So you can, you can dumb down any input uh, until you get kind of a magic combination of the various uh, captures. So that, that's, worth, that's worth exploring. Um, and I'd be happy to meet with you and, and walk through that. That, that just didn't work for, for, I mean, for live online lecturing, I yeah. had to do Zoom. Yep. Uh, and then um, the, other, the other question in terms of doing more advanced cuts, uh, you, you'll want a more advanced video editing solution. There are a number of, of free, uh, there are a number of free tools for video editing that will let you do um, Nonlinear editing, it will let, let you make cuts and take segments out and put them in different places and squish it back together and add titles uh, and, and so on. I can recommend, um, uh, I guess my recommendation would be to do a search for free and open source video editor. Um, there are three that I found that were particularly good. Uh, I like a tool that um, I'm not sure I'm going to recommend because it's got a pretty steep learning curve, uh, even though it's free. Um, and that's that's the problem with the, the non-linear editing solutions. Um, the, the learning curve is incredible um, on, on some of them. So if you can get away with a, a you know, hiding, chopping off the beginning, chopping off the end. That's really my recommendation. Um, the, if you can't, uh, you know, shoot me an email or give me a call and, and we'll, we'll find something that works. Um, iMovie is more powerful than the editing features in photos. So you, you can do, um, in iMovie, you can make all the cuts uh, and ripple edits and add titles and so on that you want to. But on the Windows side or, or even the Linux side, um, it's a different story. I'll mention the one that I, I use, which is DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it's a free video editing platform, but it is a professional tool that they happen to make available for free. 90% um, of the capabilities are enabled in the free version. Um, I can bring that up in a browser if you give me just a sec. And share that, here we go. So DaVinci Resolve, blackmagicdesign.com is where you'll find that. Um,
So happy to take other questions, happy to elaborate if I did not adequately answer uh, previous questions. That was awesome, John. Um, I, I did have a question unrelated to Zoom. You mentioned a couple things right in the beginning and I wondered if you know if um, the presentation with the PowerPoint, is that available in stream? I didn't remember you saying it wasn't, and I was just wondering if you could comment. <laughs> uh, clarify, please. Which for, for the Microsoft Stream that works with Teams. Ah, uh, um, what what Teams uh, Teams recording has done? Um, they've changed it so that the recording ends up in in OneDrive, not in Streams any longer. Yeah. Um, so you, so it's, and it's a, it's kind of a, um, I wasn't, I wasn't excited about that, about that. Um, and I did not have great success with being able to play the video back from SharePoint, which is where the link took me, um, even though it said it put it in OneDrive, it, they are the same thing. I did have to, uh, ultimately I had to download it to, to play it. It was probably still processing. Um, Shelley, I know you've done a number of recordings that have ended up in streams, and I know you're aware of how long it took some of those to end up processed in streams. It looks like there's the same um, same amount of processing going on in in the background, even though they're putting it in um, SharePoint or OneDrive now. Okay, thanks for for answering. That's interesting. John, um, do you have any opinions about um, captioning and, and transcript generator? Uh, transcript generating. I had, have had some luck, as long as I don't speak too much math, uh, with with YouTube, but that requires loading everything up to YouTube, and that's also there are potentially some issues in terms of privacy, even if I set the link to hidden. Um, of my students, but um, Zoom versus Teams versus uh, Panopto. I don't quite like Panopto in that sense versus YouTube, which captioning is possible enough? Uh, that's, um, that's a multifaceted question. None of, none of the automatic captioning mm -hmm. tools meet ADA requirements. So if you're doing this for to meet ADA requirements, um, then we need to we need to elevate the conversation. Um, if you're doing it uh, just to enhance the content that you're providing, they are they're all similar in terms of, of capability. They're in the you know over 95 percent accuracy for for standard words, standard lexicon. Um, and then, as you noted, as you get into specialized uh, vocabulary, it's, it's more problematic. Uh, Zoom does uh, does captioning. We have live transcription on. And if you go down to the bottom of your window, you can turn on the live transcript and see how that's doing. Um, and uh, we've we have suggested to numerous folks that they use YouTube as well, um, particularly if you're dealing with a foreign language. Um, that's an option where you know some of the other tools don't really address foreign language at all. Uh, but in Zoom, you can, I mean, I'm sorry, in YouTube, uh, you can you can hack that a little bit. Um, uh, in in the the best bet to do it um, in a in a streamlined manner for Cleveland State faculty is to use Panopto because you can then uh, you can generate a formal request for uh, ADA compliant captioning. Um, and if, if, particularly if you have, if uh, you have a student who has an accommodation that requires it, there's um, the disability services, I believe, covers that cost. And Karen, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, they do. Okay. Is that they cover that in general? So if I have all my lectures, yes. my, my pre-recorded lectures, if I would hand them over no, you would have to have a student that needed, a, you know, that went through the formal channels at the university and needed accommodations, and then they would 
Okay. Um, they work with a third party vendor to get everything captioned. Okay. Um, but yeah, all of the services, um, Zoom, uh, Panopto, YouTube, so on, they, they all provide some degree of, of captioning uh, of either live, like uh, you can see now in the in Zoom, uh, if you've got live transcription on, uh, or after the fact, um, if you've got the if you've told it that you wanted captioning in the beginning, uh, more specifically in Panopto. Uh, but again, that's 95, 98 percent accurate with with standard lexicon, um, not ADA compliant. I find, um, well, when, when I tested it, I found that YouTube was clearly better than Panopto. Okay. Um, it yeah, you may, may not be ADA compliant, but I'm mostly doing it for the students who just, you know, want to reread quickly the transcript and find something back or, um, yeah, or like you said, foreign students and auto translate type situations. Um, yeah, YouTube has a much better um, source, you know, database to run against for for recognition than than Panopto has. So, okay. thank you. Cool. Oh, thank you so much, Don. Do we have? Did we get to all the questions? Molly, as you're Ms. watching Shelley, the chat. Um, what about your other question about student likeness? I think John answered that with the no. advanced okay. video. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if John has further comments, but <laughs> yeah, unless you have um, it, this is this is specific to CSU's registrar and and legal department. I'm not sure what any other institution has uh, in their specifics, but. Uh, unless you have specific permission from each student, uh, you can't use their likeness. Um, it, it's a FERPA violation to use their likeness. So yeah. if, you, if you made a recording last semester that has student likenesses, you cannot reuse that recording unless you've got uh, explicit permission from the students whose likeness are captured. Um, if the students had their only their name displayed, um, maybe. Mm -hmm. But if if their likeness was captured, uh, you know, either you could go in with a, a more powerful editing tool and and crop your video so that the students are out of the picture. Mm -hmm. um, and I would argue that if if their voice is captured, as long as their voice can't be tied to an individual. Um, it's it's incidental, but if their voice is tied, you know, if you ask student X, hey student X, what's your opinion? Um, then you'd have to probably edit out the audio as well. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking. Like as I'm looking at speaker view now, could I crop to just the speaker, right? But that it sounds like possibly. So thanks for. <laughs> for the answer. Well, I guess on a technical note, does the university have a specific form for that permission or approval? <laughs> Is that, I mean, obviously we have like an IRB, but if it's not really a research project, you know, what office does this fall under if someone wanted to go back and get the permissions? I know that the policy is on the academic updates on the Keep Teaching site. I'm going to look. I don't remember if there was a form associated with that or not. They, they started to generate a form um, that they wanted every student to sign. And I and we asked them to not do that. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, there is a form. Oh, good. Okay. A FERPA consent form. On the keep teaching. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Awesome. Great. Well, I, I think maybe is that all our questions? We've kept on almost an hour. So thanks for all the, the lecture capture tips. This is something that 
I needed more experience in. So I'm really excited that you did it. And I'm sure based on the questions, we all could use a little refresher for the fall. Um, excellent. So can we, Molly's giving a virtual hand. Can we give John a hand? Do we do that on Zoom? <laughs> Thank you, John. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and thanks for going first for our sandbox. Um, the next event, so to speak, is at lunchtime. We envisioned us having kind of brown bag lunches. We're not on campus. We didn't anticipate that anyone be, would be on campus this week, but obviously that was not true. <laughs> um, but in lieu of that, we've created a gather down space. Um, thanks mainly to Kalita O'Brien. So thank you, Kalita. There's a link here in the chat and the um, the passcodes are all the same for all the digital spaces. Um, but if you wanna join us from 11.30 to 12.30 and we'll just kind of hang out in the cafe or at the pool and we can chat, <laughs> um, you can come see what Gather Town looks like, which is part of the reason we did it. Um, and then at this afternoon, we actually have three three tutorials on the schedule. At 1 p.m., we have Mandy Goodset from the library, who, and she's doing teaching students fact-checking skills and strategies. At 1.30, we have Monica gordon Percy from CSU, um, and she's giving a session on celebrating dialect diversity, creating a culturally and linguistically inclusive classroom. Um, and at 2 o'clock, we have Erin Avram um, from CSU as well, giving her Design Your Own Digital Escape Room workshop. And all those sessions will be recorded. If you can't come by, we'll have them in our resource referatory, which is on our cleteaching.org website. Um, and so you can check back, maybe give us a couple days to figure out the processing and we'll have them up as soon as we can. Um, but thanks again for everyone for coming out and hopefully we'll see you at the brown bags or this afternoon and we'll send out, um, keep checking we have a couple late ads for workshops, I think, to the schedule on Tuesday and Wednesday. So we'll send out an updated program so you can see what we have. Awesome. So we'll see you all again soon. All right. Thanks.